From Here to Eternity is one of the greatest books of the 20th century. James Jones's voice is extraordinary. He didn't write many novels, but this one is a towering piece, and I think it will stand up in the test of time. It's written in a style which is almost poetic. It's a young man's perception of the world. You know, he's, gosh, he was in his 20s when he wrote that book, and some of the, some of the f philosophical statements he makes about life in that book are not the statements of a 24, 25-year-old. It's so many different books in one. It's, at times, it's a thriller. It's a war novel, it's a love story, um, it's a psychological examination of the men and the women of this time. The novel is very edgy, it's very raw, and has a lot of important uh, sections that weren't in the original movie. I said to Tim, you could probably write, you could probably produce several shows out of this one book. To be quite honest, I didn't think I would ever do another musical. I kind of felt I'd you know, been there, done that, to use the cliché. But this has been different for me, to work with really good, new, young-ish <laughs> people um, has been very good for me as the sort of resident old codger in the team. What's been really exciting is that we've got quite an unusual team, I think. Some of us have worked a lot in musical theatre and on big musicals. Um, some are more from an opera background or a, a straight theatre background and the mix of all of that um, feels very fruitful. I find it very helpful working um, with Tamara the director and Bill the scriptwriter, and of course Stuart. Um, it hasn't just been as it has been with some of my shows in the past, me and the composer sitting down and writing 28 songs or whatever or writing an opera. This is not an opera, this is a proper stage theatrical musical. It really concerns um, a company of GIs based in Honolulu in Hawaii in 1941, just before the Pearl Harbor invasion. We arrived there in our story a few months before where we've got uh, a young recruit called Pruitt who has just joined G Company. When he turns up at Schofield Barracks, he's a, he's a, a guy that can do everything. He's a, he, he plays the bugle brilliantly. He's a great boxer. That's the re well. It is the reason why he's got he's got the transfer to G Company because they're into really into the military boxing, and they want him to to be a, a local ch a champion for them to go out and fight. But he, he's adamant he won't fight. He was the best welterweight boxer in the outfit, and he quit and said, "I'm done," because he blinded his opponent in a fight and and just made a vow that he would never fight again. And they try to break him but he's a Kentucky coal miner. He can't be broken. He's a, he's a kind of James Dean figure in a way. Pruitt is, I feel like, the ultimate anti-hero. He falls in with the other guys on the base, goes out uh, at night, meets a girl called Loreen in a whorehouse. That love affair is echoed by a, a similar love affair between the uh, sergeant on the base and his captain's wife, which, of course, is illicit those two love affairs are at the heart of the story. And then there's Maggio, who is uh, the young guy from Brooklyn who used to work in the basement of Macy's packing boxes. Who is wise and worldly and is, becomes uh, Pruitt's sidekick, if you like, and meets with a terrible end. There is tragedy all over the place, but there's also comedy and, and romance set against this extraordinary backdrop of a, of a nation about to go to war. I think it brings everything to sharp focus. This is, a, after all, America at the end of the Depression. Um, people perhaps forget this, 1941, it's only a few years away from the worst decade in American history in terms of economy. Just at the tail end of the Depression, all these boys had nowhere to go. So they joined the Army. It was almost one step up from homelessness. One of the things that I think is key, I suppose, in terms of um, my role and what I need to do with the story is that somehow we see the deeply personal and intimate aspects of our protagonists within this much larger, um, more extraordinary set of world events. Finding the intimate within the epic and finding a way of making the design deliver that. This is a really different kind of musical because it's about something real and it has real uh, connections with today. There are wars going on all the time, obviously there are lots of um, American GIs far away from home somehow trying to live a life and yet fight in a struggle which, which, which could destroy that life. This uh, juxtaposition of the romantic 
personal love story uh, with a sort of epic backdrop that um, is just, I mean, that is the stuff of musical theatre, I think. It's about people really rising above their circumstances and therefore it's about hope and aspiration against a pretty miserable backdrop. The one thing that connected all these guys, like a Kentucky coal miner with a, you know, a, a guy from Brooklyn who worked in the basement of Macy's was blues, you know, the blues and jazz. And they would get together and drink beer and everybody would take out their instrument, get guitar, uh, bugle, you know, banging on the back of, you know, garbage cans. You know, they would take out the, and they would make up blues songs about the army, you know, as they sat around. So that was the kind of, and that had, there's an element of that in here, that the sort of the connecting thread to all these guys was music. When I write a musical, I, I like to get involved in the period and uh, the place and the location and I, I think that's important. We've got a lovely opportunity with From Here to Eternity that we've got lots of different um, sound worlds that are appropriate for this piece. Obviously there's the world of Hawaii, um, which immediately makes you think of um, ukuleles and uh, slide guitars. But of course the date of the production means that uh, we were in a really musically interesting period. We were sort of at the height of Glenn Miller and the big band sound. There's a lot of different dynamics going on with Pruitt comes from Kentucky and you get this sense of there's the early stages of country music and pop music or rock and roll and you've got the swing, the start of swing music so we have a little taste of that and then you've got your big grand musical theatre moments. What we've been doing for a while and are continue, continuing to do now is um, draw those strands together and we've increasingly found that they're brilliantly complementary and, and, and at other times give a great counterpoint to each other. So, you know, if you have an intensely military moment, to then go into the kind of soft, sexy world of Hawaii is fantastic. One of the things I've quite enjoyed and has helped me with the lyrics is the fact that I've had to make them interact with the book. With a lot of the shows I've done in the past, there hasn't been a book, or has, if there has been a book, it's been within the lyrics. There's been no dialogue. And I think having Bill's script has helped me enormously in setting up certain songs. The songs I wanted to come out of the action naturally. Songs should advance the action, it's the old cliche, but they really do, I think, in our case. I think it's quite good that we have now offered the West End a show with a brand new score from a brand new composer who, who I think is, is the great undiscovered musician of this decade. I've come to musicals more from the 40s and the 30s and the world. You know, you had some, a great scene, some dialogue and a, a little song. But there's big stretches in From Here to Eternity where it's just a great play. It's a great play, it's a great story without music. And then when the music comes in, I think it takes it somewhere else. It's got men and women who are at a particularly intense moment in their lives where words fail them. And that's always the moment that music makes sense.